Hello, and thank you for joining me today on Loyal World Info. Another day of the globe spinning, another day of global news to digest. I offer a sane, rational voice in an insane, rational time. I will be your host, and let's get into today's topics. Today is April 7, 2020, and the topics of the day. Virus hit businesses go creative. Museums go online. Weddings are currently forbidden. Texting raises large funds. Rangers re-educate wildlife. Virus catch-22. Saving lives are human rights. Celebrating Thing Yan. Set prisoners free for the holiday. Or, and lastly, free food for the poor. Stay tuned and let's get into this. We have an awesome day today. First news article today, it takes us to Korea. The small businesses are finding ways to produce sales in the social distancing era. Small businesses and local governments in South Korea are testing out creative new ideas to to overcome the social distancing and, and sales dilemma. In the southern cities of Gimhae and Suron, farmers have set up drive through markets to sell vegetables and fruit. In addition, other stores are selling drive through flower arrangements for uh, they're taking cues from America, how America has their drive through testing for uh, getting tested and such. So if the, the, the issue is in February and March are usually peak seasons here with demand surging in line with the graduation and entrance ceremonies. But sales have plummeted mostly because everybody is socially distanced. In addition, celebrities are taking part in this by uh, using hashtag Save Flower Farmers. So again, they're promoting through texting. The governments are even getting involved as well because if you spend money at a at a restaurant, prepay money at a restaurant, every twenty thousand won, which is twenty dollars, they will give you a, one free mask if you turn in your receipt. Furthermore, the, the local fisherman in Pohong has a is a port city, and you can do a drive through there, and they will give you a one kilogram of a like a uh, lunchbox lunchbox uh, meal, and they will also give you a mask. So my question for you is: In what ways are businesses, small businesses, being creative around your town and around your area? How are they staying afloat? I'd love to hear your comments below. Article today. We are still in Korea, but this is something that can happen worldwide. Museums move online amid prolonged closures. Museums nationwide have moved their expositions and artworks online amid temporary closures. Some 23 national and public museums have been closed since February and will remain closed until further dates. The government has extended the closure. They plan to offer more online content during the period. The National Museum of Korea enables visitors to its website to experience expeditions using virtual reality technology. They can press pause and zoom in and out at any time to get a closer look at a particular item. The National Museum of the Modern and Complementary Art Streams is an exhibition on YouTube. Okay, so this is great. You know, many museums are low. First off, what is the last museum you visited? And how did you feel when you visit a museum? Me, I've been a while, and most times I don't like it. Either I go in a group, and I don't feel I'm getting the attention from the presenter, or they're not really presenting it in a very effective way. 
I do think that uh, if more museums go online, whether it's virtual reality or even, um, I don't know, like something like a Skype call one on one, that they can produce a lot of sales and they can draw the viewers are to, uh, into it and make more money that way. For example, I know in Korea they have this Jeju Hello Kitty Museum and they also have a 3D museum and so forth. These museums offer things online, that'd be great. But let me again, let me know about what museums you visit and if you think this is a good idea about online museum guides. I have one more thought about the VR virtual reality headset in today's economy. As we just learned, the VR headset is being used to help museums generate revenue and make the consumer have a better experience. So let's take a step back and let's think about uh, museum parks like Disneyland or Everland in Korea or zoos or SeaWorld. Can they not, for a zoo, make it, make it so you can use the VR headset and walk around and get some kind of interaction or see the animals that are there? but no one can currently go see because they are closed and this would generate revenue and be a whole new kind of experience. In the amusement park scene like Disneyland, can they not offer, I, offer some walks around the park? I understand that they cannot make you necessarily ride a roller coaster, but can you walk around and see the Seven Dwarfs, Snow White, Cinderella? Can you see the castles, like a tour through the castles? Um, or some rides like Pirates of the Caribbean and uh, whatnot. You know, you, you go through these mountains and you see many things. Can they not use the VR headset to let you see everything? And yes, they can still charge a fee for all this. Anyway, these are just my thoughts. Let me know if you think these are good ideas uh, for promoting businesses with social distancing. Thank you. Moving on to our next story of the day. The government of Vietnam says no wedding parties until the academic stops. In Hanoi, the Ministry of Cultural Sports and Tourism has instructed all authorities at all levels to promote awareness of the dangers and to practice social distancing. So he has canceled all big gatherings for weddings and funerals. And so they're telling people to delay having their big parties. So my question for you is what big days have you been putting off and how has it been affecting the way you will plan the big event later? Maybe this will also be a nail in the coffin to, to promote big weddings and hence save people a lot of money and therefore maybe they can, they can buy a house. That is my opinion, at least, right? Use the money for yourself and your family versus celebrating with everybody. Anyway, leave your thoughts below. To our next story of the day, this is about the power of text messaging. Text messaging supporters raised 5.4 million for prevention control. Hanoi, more than 2.1 million text messages have been sent to raise funds for prevention and control as of 11 a.m. on Sunday, according to the Ministry of Information and Communications. The, the messages pledged more than 126 billion dong, or 5.4 million, in the effort. The National Steering Committee Prevention and control said that the money would be used to buy medical equipment and protective tools for doctors, police, and soldiers in close contact with parties. The funds will also be used for people in quarantine centers. The funding campaign was launched on March 19th by the MOIC, the Ministry of Health the Central Committee of the Fatherhood Front of the Vietnam Red Cross Society. It will run until June 18th. Each text message sent to 1407 will contribute at least 20,000 dong, which is about 86 US cents. In another development, the authorities said 
that as 11:30 on Sunday, it had received more than 446,700 medical declarations from people entering the country. So, so this is my question for you, the viewers. What tech stack do you use, and do you know any apps or fundraising is going on with Text Me Now? How do you use your text apps? Please leave your comments below. I would really love to know. On to our next story of the day. Rangers drive monkeys back into forest. Um, and Downing, forest rangers have been attempting to drive troops of monkeys, stumped tailed, back to the Santon Nature Reserve in the central city of Danning. Vice Director of the city's Agricultural and Rural Development Department said a group of 30 monkeys that used to gather by the Linyon Pagoda seeking food from visitors have been on the move since the social distancing order were implemented on April 1st. He said no tourists meant no food The monkeys for the monkeys. So they would be forced to return to their natural habitat to forage for themselves. Recent research has stated the possibility of passing the virus from wildlife to humans. To, so you should avoid contact with wildlife. Uh, last year, the city warned tourists not to feed wildlife. The monkeys were getting used to taking candy, snacks, and fruit from visitors. Several conflicts have occurred since last year. A baby monkey was grabbed by the, a local man at the pagoda, with two other monkeys were killed by household dogs at a farm nearby. An older monkey was also hit by a car. So this is my question for you. Do you think it's okay to feed wildlife in parks or public areas or their natural places like forest? Yes or no? Please leave your comments below. I'd be interested in hearing from you. Our next topic of the day, and this comes from Thailand, but it's a global issue. Saving lives or saving human rights? Which one is more valuable? The Cash 22. Faced with the bug pandemic, several countries have given special powers to their leaders, regardless of the political system in place, to ensure that they can manage and fight the bug effectively and in a timely manner. There is a high level of anxiety and fear, however, that these special powers once granted will be misused in the name of fighting the pandemic. Worse, still, in certain countries, there is a strong possibility that these special powers might continue and subsequently become a permanent future in the months and years to come. How leaders and their citizens are in interacting with one another during the bug crisis provides some clues to the future ex exercise of power. During emergencies, freedom of movement can be severely restricted, such as through a lockdown. Modes of production can be altered and freedom of expression curtailed. As the virus continues to spread and cause death all over the world, the use of emergency powers may become even more strict and nation nationalistic if the curve fails to flatten. Both in developing and developed countries, there have already been huge outcries for the local populations and stakeholders regarding and granting of emergency powers to ruling parties. For instance, last week the European Union 
was among one of the first to issue a warning to its members not to use measures to fight the bug for self-interested political objectives. European, European, whatever. Okay, so this is my question then. Okay, so for you, after listening to this article, what powers do you think the government should be able to use and does use and uses them effectively in times of crisis? And on the other hand, what powers have they done that have stepped over the border and that you're afraid will never be rescinded or taken away? Please leave your comment below. I'd be interested in hearing. Moving on to our next topic of the day, we're going to Melmar. And before I get started, we're going to talk about a holiday that takes place in this country called Thingyan. It's their national New Year holiday of Burmese. So this is kind of like the China New Year, Tet, or our Solar New Year in Korea. Okay, so let's let's read about it as this takes place in April. Okay, so Thing Yan accumulates in the Burmese New Year, and the period of holidays are the most important and the biggest festival in Melmar. Formerly, the dates of Thing Yan would have been based on the Burma lunar solar calendar, but the dates have now been fixed in a on April 13th. A little bit about the history. Thing Yan is celebrated at the same time as many other New Years in the region. Thing Yan historically marked the changing of the year by the sun moving from the Pisces to Aries. The word Thing Yan is about to have derived from the ancient Sangrit, which means change. The legend of origin of the Thing Yan relates to the argument over the mathematical problem between two gods. The loser of this argument had his head cut off. However, when his head hit the ground, the earth would burn or if thrown in the sea, the water would dry up, and if thrown in the air, it would explode like a fireball. To keep this from happening, seven goddesses took turns holding the head for a year each, changing over on Thing Yan. The winner of the argument cut off the head of an elephant and stuck it in the headless body thereby creating the god Ganesh. How are things celebrated on this holiday? Even though Thing Yan has now been fixed in mid-April, its current date is a welcome position in the calendar, as it occurs at the hottest time of the year in Melmar. And being a water festival, it is a great opportunity to cool down and get some relief from the sweltering heat. If you are in Melmar during Thing Yan, prepare to get wet. Everyone is likely to get soaked as people are roam around with buckets of water or hose, spraying water on anyone they can. This tradition originates from the custom of washing away the bad luck of misfortune of the previous year entering the new year cleansed from the past what past water cleanses is a cleansing is a custom common in many new year festivals around the world so my question for you what holiday is special to you or your country why how has the social distancing closures affected the way you celebrate holidays leave your comments below on to our next topic of the day and this is why I taught about the Thing Yan holiday. This takes place in Melmar, but as uh, something they do for the holiday every year, the government mom, usually they release prisoners on a sign of good faith. So let's read more about this tradition and debate. The government has not yet announced its traditional release of prisoners before the annual Thing Yan festival beginning on April 10th. 
the deputy director of the prison prisons department on April 6 said that the government has not yet issued a list of names of prisoners being considered for the annual presidential amnesty that is usually granted on before the festival. He said those to be released before the holiday will have completed their sentences at the time. Now, local, local and international human rights groups have urged the Myanmar government to release prisoners in order to relieve the overcrowding in the country's jails and to prevent the spread of illness. So, but the prison officials said that they are educating inmates about how to prevent illness, including personal hygiene. They added that facilities are disinfected and visitors are disinfected before entering the prisons. The prisoner deputy recently limited prisoners to one visitor per day. So this is my question about the whole topic. Do you think that prisoners should be set free due to health concerns or should they stay potentially get sick because of life decisions that they have made please leave your comment below i'd be interested in hearing about them on to our last topic of the day this still is in melmar and it still is about the thing and holiday the melmar state counselor stated the national level bug response team announced Monday afternoon that the government will provide basic food for those struggling across the country during the national 10-day Thin Yang holiday from this week amid the heavier restrictions of movement to curb the spread of the bug. So far, Melmore has reported 22 cases. The announcement came after the state counselor's request for citizens to stay at home during this time of the Thing Yan Water Festival, the largest event in Myanmar's calendar to prevent the spread of the disease. The April 10th to 19th holiday follows further restrictions on residents moving movement, including orders for people to stay home, shutting down the public transport, and banning gatherings. Thing Yang normally allows many families to earn money by selling food and beverages to travelers. That in the announcement on Monday, the Monday, the Prevention Control Treatment Committee said from Friday that the government would distribute rice, cooking oil, salt, beans, and onions to those who lack a regular income during the holiday. They also previously stated on Facebook that users who, sh who, sh who sh face that she would be aware of people's concerns during the holiday and said that the government was planning for a solution. Apparently, the food distribution the government has promised provides 150 electrical units for domestic use until the end of April, encouraging people to stay home. So my question for you is how is your government doing or handling the poor, the homeless, or the isolated? In my case, isolated could be you know people that live on a farm and have no neighbors for a long way, or maybe two or three families on a island or part of the jungle. Anyway, leave your comments below. And this was the last article of the day. Well, that will conclude Loyal World News. Thank you for spending your time with me today. Feel free to like, subscribe, or drop a comment below. If you're on the go, listen to my podcast with the link provided in the description. I will see you tomorrow to share more world news.